This video will give you a bit of help getting started with the Animal Tracks number one CNC project. When you purchase the project, you'll receive six models. There's the um, the wood slab number one, the bear track, the deer track, the coyote track, the elk track, and then the wood slab dish shape. And this video will show you how to use that. And also the assembled layout is the um, the wood slab with the dish shape already added to it to give you a nice little um, recessed section or spot in the middle of the wood slab to merge or add in models so that you get the best shape height you can for your um, material thickness. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to uh, VCarve Pro. This is VCarve Pro 8. Um, it's important to note that all the tools that I'm going to use um, in this demonstration are available in VCarve Desktop and also um, Aspire. So we're going to create a new file and because I'm just going to be demoing um, how to use these uh, models, it really doesn't matter for me what my project size is, but I'm going to go with the standard that way um, we can work from that. So we're going to make sure this is set to inches and we're going to make this 6 inches by 6 inches we're going to make my material thickness about three quarters of an inch thick. Our datum is going to be set in the center, of course, inches. You're going to use a very high resolution, and we're going to click OK. So, seeing as we've already purchased and installed the uh, Animal Tracks uh, number one CNC project, it will show up in your Clipart browser, in your library browser of your Clipart tab under design and make and there it is right there. So there you've got the assembly, the bear track, the coyote track, the deer track, the elk track, the wood slab number one and the wood slab dish, uh, sorry the wood slab dish and the wood slab. So what we're going to do is first of all I'm going to show you how to use the uh, wood slab with the wood um, with the wood slab dish. So already as I mentioned earlier you have the assembled layout so if I double click on that it'll pop the assembled layout into the 3D view and if we look at it you'll see that it's the the wood slab and the dish added together to give you this um, nice little shape already but I didn't, we didn't want to limit you to that so by giving you these two models what you can do is you can um, scale the shape height of the wood slab dish and that will make it so that you can vary the depth of the dish in your material. And I'm going to show you how to lay that out in case you ever need to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete the assembled layout and we're going to double click on the wood slab. When you see when I bring the wood slab in it has a flat top which is perfect for V carving or adding one of the paw prints to the top or um, adding any other models you happen to have. But when we add to it the wood slab uh, dish, then what we're going to see is this dish shape will emerge out of this. But as you can see, there's a bit of a problem. When VCarve Pro brings in the, uh, the dish shape, it merges it into the already existing model. So you can see that it's there, it's the green shape, but it's just not um, being applied to the model properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our modeling tab and we're going to right click on the wood slab dish and we're going to select combine mode and we're going to select add. Now this is the dish shape has already been created in the negative so when you receive the model it's already recessed and so if you subtracted it by mistake this is what you end up getting is a raised bump on top of your wood slab which may be what you're looking for but in this case it's not at all I want to make sure that it's added on and we're going to look straight down at it and you'll see that when it when VCarve Pro brings it in it's not in the center of the wood slab where it should be it's in the center of our job space but it needs to be centered in amongst the slat area so we're going to go ahead you can either manually drag it down or you can just nudge it down so if we nudge it down you'll see that it'll take um, steps and you can nudge it down so it's nice and centered there we're just going to nudge it down a few spots then we're going to go once to the right and we're going to off click our models and you'll see that the border isn't quite um, the same all the way around the same thickness so if we double click on the uh, dish again and we zoom in a little bit if we hold down the control key and we use our cursor keys we can make little tiny nudges over until we're happy with the left and right and the top and bottom centering and I'm pretty okay with that so let's off click everything and you'll see now we have we've created that dish shape that we want inside of our uh, wood slab. A couple things I'd like to note is one is I didn't change the 
size of the wood slab before I brought in the dish shape. That's important. That way it fits properly and you haven't messed around with the sizing. So you'll want to do that before if you already know ahead of time you want to use the dish shape. Then you'll want to prepare that ahead of time and then you can go ahead and um, group them together and then scale them up to whatever you want. Now like I had mentioned earlier we've included the dish shape on its own because you may not want this to go down to 0 0.01 of a millimeter here. You might want to leave a little bit more material left in your the bottom of your dish or maybe you want to make a uh, a dish for change. So if you want to do that you can double click on the model again of the dish shape, go to your uh, your modeling tab and click the spanner, the wrench. If you click that, it'll bring up a bunch of component properties, and you can change the depth of that right here by changing it to be, maybe we want to make that much deeper, so we're going to make it a half inch deep. And you'll see that now our dish is much deeper now. So you can actually make a bowl maybe for your camp or the hunting camp or whatever you'd like, or maybe you want to make it just 0.35 and have a nice little dish for change or your wallet, uh, whatever you'd like. Um, now, of course, you can change the uh, property height of the the wood slab to be even more aggressive if you'd like and then you'll have a nice looking uh, wood slab with the bark still on around the outside. Let's close that down and we're going to delete out both of those components by selecting them both by holding the shift key and we're going to delete those out of there. Go back to our clip art tab and we're quickly going to show you how to use just the wood slab with the actual um, tracks. So. When the wood slab comes in, like I had mentioned earlier, it's flat on the top, which is perfect for using any of our um, animal tracks. Let's go ahead and use the coyote track. If we double click on that, it'll bring it in again. The combine mode is wrong. So the first time I showed you going over to the modeling tab, right clicking on the coyote track and choosing a different combine mode. Well, this time what we're going to do is we're going to do it different. We're going to double click on the, um, on the uh, coyote track. At the very bottom, you might not be able to see this, but you notice there's a little dark blue um, square, and that will bring up your floating properties menu. So when I do that, I can move it off to the side, and I can leave this active for as long as I want. And I'm just going to go ahead and change the combine mode, and they're all right across the top here to add. And you'll see that it's adding the shape, the top of our uh, slab, but it's not quite right. So we're going to look straight down in our model. We're going to go ahead and rotate by holding down the shift key, the coyote paw print around. And we're going to scale it down to there. And now you'll see that we have the coyote paws being actually taken away or recessed into our slab. So let's change the height of that to be a quarter inch and you'll see that it's even more so it's there. And now we have a nice paw print in our slab. Now what you can do, um, like in one of the um, example images on the uh, web page, you can create a nice little motif of um, different paw prints if you'd like, maybe for the wall, or maybe you want to make a sign for uh, a lodge, which would be great. Um, or maybe even you can uh, make these for the inside of your camp with all the names. So if you happen to see a paw print when you're, or a paw track when you're out um, looking around the woods and you can identify it. Now the next, next thing we're going to show you is how to make the longer style, I'll go back to the website for that, the longer style um, slab like I've illustrated here on the project sheet. And also it's being used in this example here um, so let's show you how to do that right quick. Minimize that. Let's just go ahead and delete these two models out of the project. I'm going to go back over to our clip art and we're going to bring in one of these wood slabs. We're going to look straight down on it. Go to our, our well, actually we don't need to do that. We'll stay in the 3D view. We're going to select it. Holding down the shift key, we're going to rotate it around. And then we're going to go ahead and scale it. Now, of course, if I knew that I was going to create this kind of a shape, then I would have set up my job space to use uh, to be more the shape of my final piece but in this case again I'm just illustrating how to use these not particularly coming up with an actual project that I'm going to show you tooling for. So I scaled it down also and I'm going to press F9 and center that and then I'm going to just using the shift key I'm going to drag it over so that approximately it's halfway 
down the middle of my page. Now I can't quite tell in the 3D view if I am, so I'm going to go to the 2D view and you can see that it's actually just over the center, which is great. And then what I want to do is I'm going to pick, I'm going to hold down the Control Shift in the H key. And what that's going to do is going to make a horizontal copy of my model and keep it horizontal right where it is. So if I do that, you'll see that it's flipped it over. It's kept it lined up nice. And if I go to the 3D view, you'll see what's happened. Because these components are both set to merge, then I've got a longer, when they're merged together, it makes the illusion of a longer slab. But now it looks a little too symmetrical for me. So I'm going to go ahead and select the one on the right. And then I'm going to press B on the keyboard, which is going to flip it vertically. And now it looks a little more, a little more random. Uh, a little more natural looking. Holding that now, if I go to the, um, the the 2D view, if I was going to lay out some text on this, it's kind of hard to tell where the actual flat area is on this for V carving. So here's a little top trick for you today. We're going to go ahead and hold down the Shift key while I select both of those. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to go ahead and group those together. When I group them together, V Carve Pro or Aspire or V Carve Desktop will create one grayscale bitmap for both of those combined together. So now I can see that as one solid thing, although it's not solid, it's still two individual components. If I go to my modeling tab, you'll see that there's a wood slab group. If I press the plus sign, they're both still there. I'll select the minus sign again, put them back. Now I can go ahead and lay out some text on there for v-carving. So let's just go ahead and type in um, the Smith Smith Brothers Hunting Camp. And we're going to go ahead and make that bold. We'll center it and we'll click Apply. And that's really big, so we better change that to, one, to point 0.5. Apply, and now we can close that and we can scale that down. And now this is set up perfectly for V carving that on that slab and have painted and finished nicely. It should look like a nice slab of, of wood with the bark still on it. And now I can't illustrate the actual um, text in the 3D view, but if you V-carve that, it would show up in the end on there. So I hope that some of those tips kind of help you out with this project. A couple things to go back on to remember is one is that the the paw tracks or the, or the, the animal tracks are modeled in the as a recess already, so you need to add those on. So if I double click again onto this, and then I go ahead and, and right click and I add those, then I can actually size it down. And it's actually a recess in your surface. The wood slab dish is the same. It's been modeled um, to be a, a negative shape when it's added to the uh, wood slab and if you're going to do that and you want the control of making sure everything sized correctly then bring in the wood slab first then bring in the wood slab dish don't change the scaling of either um, and then center or the, the wood slab dish manually on top of the flat spot on the wood slab and that'll give you um, the assembly layout but with the, uh, the extra ability to be able to control the depth of the actual dish if you'd like and uh, besides that, this is a great little project to have lots of fun with. And uh, you can definitely, it, the hackability of this project is huge by bringing in any of the animals that we have modeled already. Or even going back and if you wanted for the fun of it to go to your clip art that's been included with um, your install of your stuff and you go and find the bass, you can drop that in there, make that add, scale that down. And now you've got a really fun looking fish plaque for your camp with a raised fish off of it. Maybe this is the one, the elusive one that got away. Anyway, hope that was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Important note, if you plan to create tooling and run it on your CNC, make sure that you use values for the material setup and for the parameters of each toolpath that are safe and appropriate for your CNC machine, the tooling you have available, and whatever material you are planning to use for your project.